schedule a free design consultation and the more you buy, the more you'll save on blinds, shades, shutters, and more from Budget Blinds. Visit BudgetBlinds.com today. Good evening. Lloyd Minster RCMP are asking for local businesses to double check their inventory this week after a significant amount of stolen property was found inside a U-Haul Monday. Police found the U-Haul after reporting to a complaint of a gas and go at 50th Avenue and 18th Street. During the investigation, at least $5,000 worth of stolen goods was found inside the U-Haul, including clothing, electronics and children's toys. A travel trailer worth $44,000 was attached to the U-Haul. Police say it was allegedly stolen out of Leduc. A 40-year-old man and a 31-year-old woman from Edmonton, as well as a 45-year-old Grand Prairie woman, are in custody. The investigation is ongoing. It is believed that there are many victims throughout the province of Alberta, um, spanning anywhere from Edmonton, Red Deer, Sherwood Park, towards the border city, and potentially in Saskatoon as well. If you believe your business was the target of theft or fraud that may have happened between February 1st and the 2nd, you're asked to call Lloydminster RCMP at 780-808-8400. It's been a controversial topic, vaccines. Some people, and most recently a professor at Queen's University who teaches anti-vaccine, are questioning the safety of them. But as Anna Kanotfate reports in this week's Healthy Living, with more cases of measles recently in Canada, health professionals are encouraging the public to get their shots. A trip to Disneyland ended in a trip to the hospital for many these last few weeks after a measles outbreak in California. There has been a kind of a weaning down of people vaccinating and then because of that herd immunity isn't um, uh, as strong. So when people travel to other countries where measles is more endemic and then they come back to Canada, people who haven't been vaccinated are more at risk. This anti-vaccination choice stems from a belief that vaccines are connected to causing autism. Something Brown says is, to this date, unfounded. There have been large studies in the U.S. Um, and there was a large Danish study that showed that there's no increased risk of autism. I had a niece that had polio because she didn't, wasn't vaccinated many years ago. There are different things that people uh, can get sick on it, but the odds are very bad, like very slim. So I think it's your choice. I think a lot of what happens is that um, parents, because we have been uh, vaccinating for quite a while, over the past 50 years, people don't see those diseases and see the ramifications of them. So they, you know, it's not as um, vivid in their mind. And though opinions vary, most people who spoke to us were all for vaccinations. Vaccinated students have been proven to work and they didn't invent them for no reason. I think that everyone should vaccinate their kids. To be safe and protective, uh, things seem to come back again, like polio and some of them. Vaccination has uh, proven to be one of the um, most cost-effective um, ways to reduce um, burden on the health system. You know, morbidity, mortality, um, you know, people can die from these diseases. But the decision is ultimately in the hands of the parents as vaccinations remain non-mandatory. Anna Kanothate, Newcap News. Archives Weeks continues with a display of two dozen photographs lining the walls of City Hall, telling the story of Lloyd Minster's history. We're excited to participate in the uh, Saskatchewan Archives Week. Mayor Saunders spoke about the snapshots and a check of $2,500 was presented to the archives from the Chamber of Commerce. Saunders says these photos of the past inform our present with one particular picture near to his heart. There's one of my father being recognized, uh, so uh, we're very proud of uh, that. Uh, but of course, it's very interesting to look back because some of these date back till 1885, uh, up until 2013 when that particular photograph was taken. The regional archives are in the process of digitizing thousands of photos and relocating from the basement of the library to the Cultural and Science Centre. We've outgrown the facility. Um, as well, um, our current location is in a basement, and although it has been dry to date, um, we can't risk having an irreplaceable um, collection below ground. 
Archive Week and Saturday, but the photos will remain up and then rotate between two other displays at the airport and Lakeland College. Students from F.G. Miller High School are coming together to fight homelessness and provide a unique way to help those less fortunate. Young members of the high school's PUP program are lending a hand to fundraise for the Teens for Jeans campaign, an organization that helps to provide homeless shelters with the most requested item, a simple pair of jeans. It's one of the most asked for items at homeless shelters just because, like, you know, everyone loves jeans. They're comfortable, they're sturdy, and, like, the wind can't get through them as good as sweatpants or things like that. So make people feel a little bit more home. With one in every five homeless people under the age of 25, the program aims to inspire the youth to help other youth in need and give back to their communities. So it's good for us to, you know, realize that not everyone's as fortunate as we are and that we can help. Jeans can be any size and color as long as they're gently used and not too worn. You can help someone that's not as fortunate as you are, you know, with the clothes that maybe don't fit you anymore or things like that. They can help close someone else for the winter. The school will be accepting donations until February 11th.